Everybody knows which hand they prefer to use. Handedness is one of the most familiar human traits. But to scientists, it's nearly a complete mystery. Are there genes involved? Cultural norms? And why do 90% of humans prefer using their right hands? Emory University neuroscientist Bill Hopkins has spent years looking for answers to questions of handedness. To get to the bottom of it, he observes the phenomenon in our closest living relative, the chimpanzee. The claim has been historically that this is something uniquely human, and so we've been trying to answer this question by measuring handedness for different tasks and you know, comparing them to what we might find in humans. Knowing if and how chimps might take advantage of handedness could help uncover the origins of the trait in us. To explore the behavior in the apes, Hopkins has them perform a variety of manual tasks. We put peanut butter on the inside of the tube. In order to get the food out, they need a single digit, and they can't use a single digit without having to hold the pipe with another hand. So for us, it's a really great measure because now the hands have to work in a complementary manner. This is a right-handed chimp named Azalea. She's using her right index finger to get the peanut butter out. So this is another measure of handedness that we use. It's called the uh, simulated termite fishing task. What they'll do is they'll use that stick to probe into uh, the hole like that. All right, and they dip in and then they pull it out and they, usually there'll be food at the end of the stick. By conducting experiments like these on hundreds of captive chimps, Hopkins has determined that the apes tend to be right-handed. This is significant because it means that handedness may not be uniquely human. 313 chimps we tested, I think there were only two individuals that prefer, two or three that prefer their left hand for all of the measures, right? So it's really, really rare to find a really strongly left-handed individual. Hopkins and other researchers have recorded similar behavior in wild chimps, though data from the field tend to be less conclusive. To bolster his claims of population level right-handedness in chimps, Hopkins also performs MRI scans on the brains of the apes at Yerkes. With these three-dimensional images, we can go in and quantify different regions of the brain um, to try and assess what neuroanatomical regions vary in association with handedness. There are two regions that Hopkins and his colleagues home in on, the inferior frontal gyrus and the motor hand area of the precentral gyrus, also called the knob. Here's the knob in the left cerebral hemisphere of a chimp named Abby. You can see it's clearly larger in Abby's right hemisphere than her left. Abby happens to be, you can predict it, a left handed chimp. So she kind of fits the pattern that we would think. Hopkins says that his results indicate deeper evolutionary roots for handedness. We are trying to identify or look for genes um, in post-mortem material for chimps that we know that have been right or left-handed. So the idea is ultimately we should be able to maybe identify some, some potential genes. The existence of handedness in non-human primates is not exactly settled. But the more evidence Hopkins accumulates, the stronger his case that the mystery of handedness may not be limited to humans.